Welcome to my recap of the original Matrix trilogy. In this video, I've tried to simplify and explain some of the more confusing aspects of these movies. So if you want to skip ahead to some of those moments, use the chapter markers in the description. Otherwise, grab your red pill and enjoy the recap. Police officers corner a notorious hacker named Trinity at a hotel in Mega City. With impossible speed and strength, she takes them out and escapes arrest, until men in suits and sunglasses arrive, showing similar supernatural abilities. She approaches a phone booth, but one of the men drives a truck toward it. She runs into the booth and grabs the phone, disappearing just as the truck crashes into the booth. Thomas Anderson, a software engineer who moonlights as a computer hacker under the alias Neo, wakes at his desk. He finds a message on his computer. The Matrix has you, and follow the white rabbit. At the door, Neo meets one of his customers who invites him for a night out. Although hesitant, he decides to join them when he notices the tattoo of a white rabbit. At the club, Trinity approaches Neo, brings her lips close to his ear, and tells him she knows he has been looking for him. But she reveals that what Neo truly seeks is the answer to the question. And Neo knows the question. What is the Matrix? She tells him the answer is out there, and it will find him if he wants it to. At work the next morning, Neo's delivered a package, and in it finds a cell phone. It rings. Neo answers to hear the voice of the man he's been searching for, Morpheus. Morpheus warns they are coming for him, and peeking from his cubicle, Neo sees three conspicuous men in suits and sunglasses. Morpheus instructs Neo to run into an empty office where he is given a choice, escape on the scaffold or face arrest. Neo climbs onto the building's ledge and nearly falls. I can't do this, he says, and instead accepts arrest. He is brought to an interrogation room and surrounded by the men in suits. They offer to absolve him of his cyber crimes if he helps them capture the known terrorist, Morpheus. Neo gives them the finger and asks for his phone call. What good is a phone call, the man asks, if you are unable to speak? Neo's mouth disappears as his lips fuse together. The men throw him on the table and insert a spider-like machine into his belly button. Neo wakes in bed and figures it was all a dream. Then he receives another call from Morpheus. He tells Neo to go to the Adams Street Bridge if he'd like to meet. There, he's picked up by Trinity and two others. They extract the bug from his belly button, which Neo is shocked to learn is real. With the tracking device removed, they bring him to meet Morpheus. He tells Neo why he's there. It's because Neo knows something is wrong with the world, even if he can't say exactly what it is. Morpheus offers two pills. Take the blue pill and wake up in bed as if none of this happened. Or take the red pill to stay and learn the truth, after which there will be no turning back. Neo takes the red pill. Morpheus brings him to a room where Trinity and others work on some machinery connected to a chair. As Neo sits, Morpheus explains that the pill was part of a trace program to pinpoint Neo's location outside the Matrix. As the process begins, reality seems to distort. Then Neo wakes up naked in a mechanical pot of red fluid and looks around to see thousands of others just like it. Suddenly wires plugged into his body disconnect and the tub drains him down a tube until he splashes into a pool below, and he is quickly picked up by a ship. Inside he sees Morpheus and stays conscious just long enough to hear him say, Welcome to the real world. Later, Neo wakes in a bed dressed in ragged clothes. He pulls a wire from his arm and finds a mechanical socket on the back of his neck. Morpheus greets him and begins to reveal the truth. It is not 1999 as Neo believes, but closer to 2199. He asks Neo to follow him. This is my ship, he says, the Nebuchadnezzar. And he introduces the crew, Trinity, Apoc, Switch, Cypher, Mouse, Tank, and Dozer. Tank and Dozer are brothers. They have Neo sit in a chair where a cord is plugged into the socket on the back of his neck. He wakes inside a virtual world where Morpheus greets him and explains that they are in a program where anything can be loaded. He tells Neo that the world he knows, the reality Neo has been living in, 
is not real, but is a computer simulation known as the Matrix. The real world is an apocalyptic desert, and Morpheus and Neo suddenly find themselves in a digital rendition of it. He tells Neo the bits and pieces they know. Humanity created artificial intelligence, which grew beyond their ability to control. War broke out, so humans scorched the sky to block the sun which powered the machines. Without solar energy, machines found a new power source humans. They created endless farms where humans are produced and used as batteries, while their minds are held prisoner in the Matrix. Neo panics, not wanting to believe any of it. They wake him in the real world and he continues to panic until he vomits and passes out. Later, Morpheus tells Neo that when the Matrix was first built, there was a man born inside who had the ability to change whatever he wanted to remake the Matrix as he saw fit. It was he who freed the first of us, Morpheus says. After he died, the Oracle prophesied his return and that his coming would hail the destruction of the Matrix. End the war, bring freedom to our people. He believes that Neo is this man, that Neo is the one. After some rest, it is time for Neo's training to begin. He meets Tank and notices the man has no mechanical plugs on him Tank was born in the real world, outside the Matrix. He tells Neo about the last human city of Zion, located deep underground near Earth's core where it's still warm. Then Neo receives training, as Tank uploads knowledge of jujitsu into his mind, along with Kempo, Taekwondo, and many other forms of combat. After 10 hours of downloading skills, Morpheus pays Neo a visit. I know Kung Fu, Neo says. Show me. Morpheus replies. They spar inside a virtual dojo, but Morpheus never loses the upper hand as he moves impossibly fast. He explains that the rules like a body's physical limits or even gravity can be bent inside the matrix. They continue, and this time Neo moves faster and finally hits Morpheus. So Morpheus asks Tank to load the jump program. Suddenly they find themselves on the roof of a skyscraper. Free your mind. Morpheus tells Neo, before leaping impossibly high from one building to another. Outside the simulation, the crew watches nervously. No one has ever made the first jump. If Neo does, he may actually be the one. Neo leaps off the building and falls to the ground which warps and bends to prevent a lethal landing. Back in reality, Neo is surprised to find his mouth bleeding. Morpheus explains that your mind makes the experience real, and confirms that death in the Matrix means death in reality. Inside the program again, Morpheus demonstrates that no one plugged into the Matrix can be trusted, because at any time, they can be taken over by an agent, the men in suits and sunglasses. Agents are protectors of the Matrix, and anyone who has ever fought one has died. Sooner or later, Morpheus says, they will have to face them, and he believes Neo will be the first to do so successfully. Although agents are impossibly fast and strong, they are still subject to physical laws, which, as the one, Neo will soon be free of. Exiting the simulation, they find their ship being chased by a sentinel, a squid-like machine that destroys rogue humans. They land quietly, shut off the power, and prepare an EMP, or an electromagnetic pulse, they disable any electrical systems in the blast radius. It's the only weapon we have against the machines, Trinity explains. The sentinels pass by without incident, and the EMP is not used. Over a drink, Cypher laments to Neo how he regrets not taking the blue pill, and undercuts Morpheus' promise that Neo is the one. A little piece of advice, he says. You see an agent, you do what we do. Run. Inside the Matrix, Cypher meets with an agent and finalizes their agreement. The machines will wipe Cypher's memory and put him back in the Matrix as a wealthy, successful man to live in blissful ignorance. In return, he will give them Morpheus. Later, Neo is brought back inside the Matrix to meet the Oracle. Before seeing her, he asks Trinity what happened at her meeting with the Oracle. She starts to answer, but hesitates and stops herself. Morpheus is more forthcoming, telling Neo that the Oracle is the one who told them the prophecy of the One, and she told Morpheus that he would find the One. He explains that she is a guide that helps you find the path. 
In the waiting room, Neo sees children referred to as potentials. They each show strange abilities, including one who bends spoons with his mind. He tells Neo that the trick is to realize there is no spoon. Neo tries and is able to bend it as well. He is brought in to see the oracle and finds a woman baking cookies. She asks if Neo thinks he is the one. When he is uncertain, she explains that if you are the one, you know it. Then she has a closer look at him. You already know what I'm going to tell you, she says. I'm not the one, he responds. Then she tells him that despite this, Morpheus believes in it so strongly, he will sacrifice his life to save Neo's. She says that one of them will die, and it will be up to Neo to decide who. Then she gives him a cookie, and he leaves. On the way out, Neo spots a cat, then sees it again. Oh, deja vu, he says. This catches the attention of his crew. They inform him that deja vu is typically a glitch in the Matrix when they change something. And Mouse finds their exit suddenly blocked by brick walls, just before he is killed by a tactical team. They were sent by the agents who were tipped off by Cypher. Knowing that telephone hard lines are needed to exit the Matrix, the line is cut, and they are trapped inside the building. Their operator tank watches from outside the Matrix and helps them find a place to hide, inside the walls. And that works, until Cypher gives away their position. A policeman fires into the wall until he's replaced by an agent. The agent grabs Neo through the wall, but Morpheus breaks out to fight him off. You must get Neo out, he shouts. That's all that matters. Neo wants to stay and help, but Trinity grabs him and forces him to follow. They fight their way out, though Cypher purposefully trips so it can appear he was inadvertently left behind. Morpheus fights the agent, who introduces himself as Agent Smith. They fight until Smith gets the upper hand and has Morpheus taken by the cops. Now separated from the rest of the group, Cypher finds a phone with Tank's help and exits, joining Tank and his brother Dozer in the real world. Before the rest can follow, Cypher picks up a lightning rifle and shoots Tank, then Dozer. Trinity calls for Tank, but Cypher is the one who answers the phone. He rants about how tired he is of fighting and living in their cold, dark reality. As Cypher rants, he unplugs Apoc, who dies immediately, then Switch. And as he reaches for Neo's plug, Tank reveals that he survived the earlier attack and kills Cypher with a lightning gun then helps Trinity and Neo out of the Matrix. Still inside, Morpheus is brought to a skyscraper and interrogated by Agent Smith. He tells Morpheus that the first Matrix was designed as a paradise where everyone would be happy. But it was a disaster. No one accepted the program. The perfect world was a dream that humans kept trying to wake up from. Morpheus is injected with something which after enough time will crack his mind. So he'll tell the agents what they want to know. Monitoring from outside the Matrix, Tank explains to Neo that the agents want codes to Zion's mainframe computer, given to the leader of every ship. If an agent got into their mainframe, they could destroy humanity. Tank insists they have to pull the plug and kill Morpheus to keep the code secret and protect Zion. But before he can, Neo stops Tank and says that he will enter the Matrix to rescue Morpheus. The Oracle told him that he would have to choose who lives, him or Morpheus. So he believes that if he sacrifices himself, Morpheus will live. And he believes the Oracle that he is not the one, so his life is not worth saving over Morpheus's. They think Neo is crazy, but agree to give him a chance, though Trinity insists on joining him. In the loading program, Neo tells Tank they'll need guns, lots of guns. And as the weapons are loaded, Trinity warns, no one has ever done anything like this. That's why it's going to work, Neo says. Smith asks the other agents to leave him alone with Morpheus. He removes his earpiece so he is not monitored and tells Morpheus how much he hates this world. He can't take the smell of it any longer. And to be free, he needs to complete his mission. He needs Morpheus to give him the codes. Downstairs, Neo and Trinity use their impossible speed, acrobatics, and guns to fight their way up to the roof. Things go smoothly until an agent arrives. Neo fires repeatedly, but it dodges every bullet. 
When the agent fires back, Neo dodges all but one bullet, which knocks him to the ground. The agent approaches and points his gun, then dodge this, Trinity says, before shooting the agent in the head. She asks Neo how he moved so fast. You moved like they do, she says, but Neo doesn't have an answer. Using a helicopter left by the tactical team, Neo and Trinity fly to the side of the building and grab Morpheus. Once they get away from the carnage, Neo tries telling Morpheus the truth. The Oracle, Neo says. She told me, she told you, Morpheus interrupts, exactly what you needed to hear. That's all. Tank finds them a hard line at the subway station, and they head to it. Morpheus and Trinity exit just before Agent Smith arrives and destroys the phone so Neo cannot follow them. Run, Neo, run, Trinity whispers, but Neo stays. For the first time in known history, a human holds his own against an agent, and in the midst of their fight, Neo leaves Smith to be hit by an oncoming subway. Then, the agent steps off the subway to continue his pursuit, and seeing the fight can go on forever, Neo runs. In the real world, Sentinels approach the Nebuchadnezzar. Morpheus orders them to prepare the EMP, but Trinity warns they can't activate it until Neo is out. If it goes off while he's jacked in, it'll kill him. I know, Trinity, Morpheus says. Don't worry, he's gonna make it. Neo runs as agents appear at every corner, replacing nearby civilians to chase him. He reaches the room where a phone and his exit await. Neo opens the door and finds Agent Smith who shoots him point-blank in the heart. Neo looks at the blood pouring from his chest. Then the agent shoots him eight more times. It can't be, Morpheus says as Neo's heart stops. As sentinels cut into the ship, Trinity tells Neo that the Oracle told her she would fall in love, and the man she loved would be the one. So you see, she says, you can't be dead. I love you, then kisses him. Neo's heart beats again, and inside the Matrix, he stands. When the agents fire on him, Neo holds up his hand and stops the bullets. Then, he effortlessly fights Smith with one hand. Finally, he flies into the agent and destroys him from the inside. Neo runs to the phone, and just after he exits, they activate the EMP and stop the Sentinels. Neo wakes up and returns Trinity's kiss. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. Neo says in a message to the machines. He tells them that he is going to show people what the machines don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you, Neo says. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, in a world where anything is possible. Then he hangs up the phone and flies into the sky. Trinity leaps from a motorcycle and fights her way into a guarded building. She is pursued by an agent and almost escapes until a bullet hits her chest. Neo wakes from his nightmare next to a sleeping Trinity and fears it is a premonition. Neo doesn't tell Trinity the contents of the dream, but she knows he is shaken, and she reassures him that the Oracle will call soon. Morpheus, Trinity, and Neo head to a meeting inside the Matrix, where teams from other ships have convened at a hideout. Captain Niobe informs them that 250,000 Sentinels are digging from the surface down to Zion, and will arrive in 72 hours. She also shares Commander Locke's order that all of them are to evacuate broadcast level, where you must be to plug into the Matrix, and return to Zion. Morpheus agrees to evacuate, but first asks for some help. The prophecy of the One will soon be fulfilled, but the Oracle must be consulted. Someone needs to stay at broadcast level in case she tries to contact them. Morpheus would do it himself, but his ship needs to be recharged. He will head to Zion and return as soon as possible. In the meantime, he asks for a volunteer to stay behind, and Captain Ballard agrees to stay. Suddenly, Neo senses something and heads to the entrance. Before he arrives, Agent Smith drops off an envelope for Neo. In it, he finds an earpiece, Smith's way of saying that, Neo freed him, and he is no longer taking orders from the system. Then, Neo senses something else. He tells the guards that the meeting is over and to leave. Three agents punch through the fortified entrance, and Neo effortlessly fights them off before flying away. Later, the Nebuchadnezzar, piloted by the recently added crew member, Link, arrives at Zion. Morpheus is immediately brought to Commander Locke for his disobedience, for requesting that a ship stay behind. 
and there is already tension between them, as Captain Niobe used to be with Morpheus, but is now with Locke. The commander chides Morpheus for prioritizing the prophecy over following orders and protecting the city. Then, Counselor Haman arrives and lets them know there will be a gathering in Zion that night. The people have noticed something is going on, so they'll have to decide how much to tell them about the approaching army. Locke recommends they keep things quiet to avoid panic while Morpheus insists on the truth. Meanwhile, as Neo and Trinity head home, they are interrupted by civilians approaching Neo as though he were a messiah. Elsewhere in Zion, Link comes home to see his wife, Z. She is a sister of Tank and Dozer, both of whom are deceased. She worries about Link being gone so much and asks him to move to another ship that's home more often. But Link cannot, as he promised Dozer he would operate the Nebuchadnezzar if anything ever happened to Tank. And he tries to calm her fears by telling her how, after the things he's seen, he is starting to believe in Morpheus. The war will be over soon. At the gathering that night, Counselor Haman invites Morpheus to speak, and he gives a speech of hope. He confirms the Sentinel army is on its way, but says that they must shed their fear. He reminds them that after a century of war with the machines, they are still here. Tonight, he says, let us send a message to that army. They will tremble the halls with celebration and make the machines remember that Zion is not afraid. And they party, which gives Neo and Trinity a chance to finally be alone. But the vision of Trinity's death sullies Neo's mood. Trinity, he says, I can't lose you. She takes his hand and assures that she is never letting go. Ballard's crew, who stayed behind inside the Matrix, receives a message from the Oracle, but they also run into Agent Smith. Most of the crew manages to escape, but Smith gets a hold of Bane before he can follow. Smith plunges his hand into Bane's chest and overwrites the man with a copy of himself. This new Smith exits through the phone to occupy Bane's body outside the Matrix. The Oracle's message asking Neo to come meet her is delivered. Before Neo departs, a kid who looks up to him delivers a parting gift from one of the orphans, a spoon. In the Matrix, Neo meets the Oracle's guard, Seraph. Seraph attacks Neo and they fight until Seraph is sufficiently convinced Neo is the one. Having passed the test, Neo is taken to a hallway of programmer back doors. Seraph opens a particular door, which leads to the Oracle. In their conversation, Neo learns a few things. The Oracle and Seraph are both programs from the machine world. It is up to Neo whether or not to trust her, but she assures that her only interest is in the future. She also tells him that once programs break down or are no longer needed, they are deleted by returning to the machine's mainframe, or the source. But some resist deletion and instead hide in exile. Ghosts, vampires, werewolves, or angels are examples of exiles. She tells Neo that he will need to go to the source. She points out that he's seen it in his dreams as a door made of light. In his dreams, after Neo enters the door, he sees Trinity fall, but wakes up before he can tell if she lives or dies. The Oracle explains that Neo has the sight now. He can see into the future, but he cannot see past choices he does not understand. That's why he can't see if she lives or dies. Are you saying I have to choose whether Trinity lives or dies? He asks. No, she answers. You've already made the choice. Now you have to understand it. And if Neo fails, Zion will fall. Before leaving, she tells Neo that he can save Zion if he reaches the source. But to do that, he needs the Keymaker, who is being held prisoner by a dangerous program named the Merovingian. She gives Neo his location and leaves. Then, Smith arrives. He tells Neo that they have a connection. Perhaps some part of Neo was imprinted onto him. Smith explains that after Neo destroyed him, he resisted deletion and became an exile, no longer an agent of the system. Then he reveals many Agent Smith copies, and Neo is quickly surrounded by them. Smith plunges his hand into Neo's chest and begins turning him into another copy, spreading himself like a virus. But Neo resists and then fights the growing mob of Smiths before flying off. In Zion, 
The Council asks Commander Locke to send a ship and ascertain the fate of the One, since there's been no word from the Nebuchadnezzar. Locke says it could take days for a single ship to find them. Then send two, they insist. This is insane, Locke says, unwilling to lose two ships that he needs for their defense. But the Council overrides him and asks for volunteers. Captain Sorin of the Vigilant volunteers, and to Locke's shock, Captain Niobe of the Logos does as well. Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus arrive at a restaurant to meet the Merovingian and his wife, Persephone. He is guarded by twins dressed all in white. The Merovingian pontificates that causality, action and reaction, is the only truth. Morpheus retorts that everything begins with choice. But the Merovingian disagrees. Neo believes he chose to come here, but really, he was told to by the Oracle, and he obeyed. We are slaves to causality, and the best we can do is understand why. Something he does and they do not. They are just links in a chain. He excuses himself, refusing to give them the keymaker needed to reach the source. On the way out, Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus run into Persephone. She surmises that her husband is currently cheating on her and betrays him in return. She offers to bring them to the keymaker, but in exchange, she wants Neo to kiss her like he would Trinity. He complies half-heartedly, so she starts to leave. But Neo tries again. He removes his sunglasses and kisses her with a bit more passion. She takes them to a door that leads to a back room, but when she closes it and uses a certain key, it suddenly leads to a mansion. She takes them to a hidden room where they find the Merovingian's prisoner, the Keymaker. As they leave, the Merovingian and his guards block their path. He tells the twins to go after the Keymaker, and they suddenly become translucent, taking on a ghost-like appearance. As they float toward the Keymaker, he runs. Morpheus and Trinity chase the Keymaker and the ghosts, while Neo stays to fight the Merovingian and his guards. Neo stops their many bullets, so the men resort to hand-to-hand -hand combat, and make use of the many antique weapons in the Merovingian's collection. After the guards are defeated, the Merovingian runs through a doorway and closes it behind him. When Neo opens the door, its destination has changed and he suddenly finds himself in the mountains, 500 miles away. Morpheus and Trinity try fighting the twins, but it's made difficult by their ghost abilities. When translucent, bullets pass through them, they pass through walls, and wounds heal immediately. But they manage to get the Keymaker into a car, and Link finds them an exit just off the freeway. They are chased by the twins, and now agents as well, sent to delete the Keymaker in exile. In the midst of their battle, Niobe enters the Matrix and joins the fight. With her help, they are just barely able to protect the Keymaker. Eventually, the agents get the upper hand and nearly destroy Morpheus and the Keymaker, but Neo finishes his 500-mile flight just in time to save them both. Afterward, the Keymaker tells Morpheus, Sorin, and Niobe's teams where to find the source. In a building, there is a special door which leads there, but the building is wired with bombs that will explode if an alarm is triggered. To get in, they will have to cut off the building's power source. That means destroying a nearby power station and deactivating its emergency backup system in a separate location. After that, Neo will have a five-minute window to enter the door which leads to the source. Before the mission begins, Neo asks Trinity to promise she will stay out of the Matrix during their battle. He does not tell her why, but he hopes it will prevent the future he's seen in his dreams. The future where she dies. Near midnight, they strike. Niobe's team reaches the power station, and Soren's team gets to the backup system. But in the real world, Soren's ship is destroyed by Sentinels, along with him and everyone else on it. In the Matrix, their bodies fall lifelessly, no longer inhabited by living minds. Niobe's team takes down the power station, but with Soren's team dead, the backup system remains active, and so do the building's explosives. Neo and Morpheus enter the special hallway containing the door. Inside the hall, they cannot be reached by Link, and cannot be warned that opening the door will trigger the bomb. With no other options, Trinity breaks her promise and enters the Matrix. She will take down the backup system herself. In the hallway, Neo, Morpheus, and the Keymaker encounter Smith and his copies. The ensuing fight slows them down and delays their opening the door, staving off the explosion. When they finally reach it, Trinity takes down the power system and the door is opened safely. 
But just as the door is closed, the smiths shoot the keymaker. With his dying breaths, he tells Morpheus which door will take him home. And he hands Neo a key, saying, You will know which door. Hurry, Neo. Neo walks through the white door and enters a room filled with monitors, showing projections of how Neo may react to what follows. In the center of the room sits a man who introduces himself as the architect, the program who created the Matrix. And finally, he reveals the truth. The first version of the Matrix failed because it was too perfect and rejected as unreal by its inhabitants. The second tried to account for this but failed again. So a new program was created to investigate the human psyche. This program came to be known as the Oracle, and she stumbled upon a solution. People had to be given a choice to accept or reject the Matrix, even if only subconsciously. So they created a new version with choice, and 99% accepted it. But the machines knew that the remaining 1% would become a problem if left unchecked. So those who reject the simulation are allowed to escape into Zion. When Zion grows too large, the machines destroy it and restart the Matrix. This has happened five times before and is about to happen again. The introduction of choice into the equation also had an unexpected side effect. It led to an anomaly, the One. The architect has been unable to rid the program of this systemic anomaly, so instead, he incorporates it into their plan. The life of the One is guided so that it always leads back here, where the architect offers a choice. The One must select 23 individuals, 16 female, 7 male, to rebuild Zion so after its destruction, it can continue as humanity's illusory escape hatch. And the One must return to the Source, allowing their code to be temporarily disseminated thereby removing the one as a threat until the anomaly re-emerges and the cycle continues. Neo's five predecessors chose to comply with this process because they were guided throughout their lives to feel a strong connection with humanity. So they always chose to sacrifice themselves for the continuation of the human race. But the architect points out that Neo is different. He feels such a connection, but he also feels something the others did not love for a specific person. Trinity, Neo shouts, and inside the Matrix, Trinity is pursued by an agent after shutting down the backup system. Without Neo's help, she will die and fulfill the vision from his nightmares. So Neo is given a choice. One door leads to the source. Trinity and Zion will die. The Matrix will restart with its seventh iteration, and Neo will select 23 individuals to start Zion anew. The cycle continues. The other door leads back to the Matrix. Neo can save Trinity, but this will lead to a system crash, killing everyone connected to the Matrix. Coupled with the extermination of Zion, this will result in the extinction of the human race. Neo chooses love. He goes through the door leading back to the Matrix and catches Trinity just after she is shot by the agent. As she dies, he uses his powers as the One to reach inside her and remove the bullet. Her heart stops, but he reaches inside her again and restarts it. Trinity lives, and the two share a kiss. In the real world, Neo breaks the news to Morpheus that the prophecy was a lie. The One was never meant to end anything, but is just another system of control. I don't believe that, Morpheus says. But Neo points out that if the prophecy were true, the war should have ended when he reached the source. But as things stand, Zion is mere hours away from destruction. I'm sorry, Neo says. I know it isn't easy to hear, but I swear to you it's the truth. An alarm blares warning of nearby sentinels. One that is out of EMP range carries a bomb, so they run from the ship and watch the Nebuchadnezzar explode behind them. I have dreamed a dream, Morpheus says, but now that dream has gone from me. More sentinels approach and they run again, but Neo sees that they will not make it. Suddenly, he stops running. Something's different, Neo says. I can feel them. The sentinels approach. Neo holds up his hand and seemingly destroys the machines with his mind. The sentinels fall and Neo collapses unconscious. Then another ship, the Hammer, arrives and rescues them. Neo's vitals are stable, but he appears to be in a coma. 
Roland, the Hammer's captain, informs them of what transpired in the real world while they were in the Matrix. Several ships were preparing for a counterattack against the Sentinels, but before they were in position, an EMP went off early. Taking down five ships and everyone aboard was slaughtered. No one knows why the EMP went off, except one man. Among the wreckage, an unconscious survivor was found. Bane, though none of them are aware that his body is inhabited by the mind of Smith, and that he is the one who triggered the EMP. The ship's doctor reviews Neo's neural scans and tells Trinity that somehow they're identical to that of someone jacked into the Matrix, even though Neo is in a coma and not plugged in. Meanwhile, the ship receives a call from Seraph, telling them to visit the Oracle at once. Neo wakes at a train station with a young girl named Sati staring at him. She informs him that the train from here leads to the Matrix. That's where Sati and her parents are going. But Neo cannot join them, as the train man won't allow it. Morpheus and Trinity visit the Oracle, who now wears a different face. Since she was last seen, the Merovingian destroyed her, but she was rebuilt with a new shell. She tells them that Neo is trapped in a place between this world and the machine world. The Link is controlled by a program called the Train Man. He uses it to smuggle programs in and out of the Matrix. They must reach Neo before the Train Man does, as the Train Man works for the Merovingian, and he has placed a bounty on their heads. Seraph will guide them there. At the train station, Neo meets Sati's parents, Ramakandra and Kamala. Neo notes that all three of them are programs, and Ramakandra explains why they are there. He is the power plant systems manager for recycling operations, and his wife is an interactive software programmer. But they birthed a daughter, who does not have a purpose within the program, so she is slated for deletion. They went to the Merovingian for help, and he arranged for the train man to smuggle her into exile. Meanwhile, Seraph brings Trinity and Morpheus to the train man, but he refuses to help and evades their capture. Then, the train arrives at the station, and the train man refuses Neo entry. Neo threatens him, but the train man built this place and has control over it. He punches Neo, sending him flying into a wall, and the train leaves. Neo tries running after it, but the station is an impossible loop. Running through one end simply brings him back to the other. Having failed to reach Neo before the train man, Seraph, Trinity, and Morpheus go to the Merovingian instead. They fight their way past his guards and find him at the back of his club. He agrees to speak, though the conversation is ultimately fruitless. He only agrees to return Neo if they bring him the eyes of the Oracle. I don't have time for this shit. Trinity says. Then a brief battle ensues that ends with Trinity's gun against the Merovingian's forehead. Though Seraph and Morpheus are also trapped in a standoff with many guns pointed at them. Trinity makes a new offer. Give them Neo, or they all die. He agrees to her terms, and Neo is freed. Before leaving the Matrix, Neo visits the Oracle. He asks how he entered the Matrix without jacking in, and how he stopped four Sentinels just by thinking it. She explains that the Source gives power to the One, and that power extends beyond the Matrix. Neo can feel and manipulate machines even when he's not hardwired in. Neo felt the source when he touched those sentinels, but he wasn't ready for it. He asks if it's true that Zion will be destroyed at midnight, like the Architect said. She assures him that the Architect doesn't know for certain, as he cannot account for choice in his projections. He does not understand choice. Finally, Neo asks what she wants. She answers that she wants the same thing as him, the end of the war. And she does not know if Zion can be saved, but she knows where Neo will have to go to find out. Where? Neo asks. You know where, she answers. But if he fails, there may be no tomorrow for any of them. Everything that has a beginning has an end, she says, explaining that Smith will soon have the power to destroy the Matrix, but he won't stop there. He won't stop until there's nothing left at all. What is he? Neo asks. He is you, she answers, your opposite, your negative, the result of the equation trying to balance itself out. Neo wakes in the real world and excuses himself, telling the crew he needs time. Inside the Matrix, Smith and his army of copies reaches the Oracle. Seraph tries to sneak Sati away, 
who is left in the Oracle's care, but both are captured and turned into two more Smith copies. And he takes over the Oracle as well. But the Smith clones watching are disturbed, as the process seems more intense than usual. Smith removes his hand from the Oracle's body once she is converted, then he is taken aback when the new Smith takes off his sunglasses. The new Smith then laughs maniacally as he is suddenly filled with the Oracle's knowledge of the future. In the real world, Bane, possessed by Smith, finally wakes. When interrogated, he claims not to remember anything, and Captain Roland tells the doctor to make him remember. Later, Roland is informed that the Logos, Niobe's ship, has been located, though it appears to be powered down. They disembark from the hammer to investigate and find Niobe with a couple of her crew members alive. They were taken down after an encounter with Sentinels, but the ship is intact and can be restarted with a jump from the hammer. At the Council, Commander Locke explains that if the machines get inside the city, the odds of survival decrease dramatically. So their primary goal is to stop the digging machines at the dock. Their odds of success are low, so Locke will need as many soldiers as possible and has asked for additional volunteers. And Link's wife, Z, is among them. She makes shells in preparation for the attack, knowing that holding the dock is her only hope of ever seeing Link again. Another volunteer is the kid that worships Neo. Although he is under 18 and too young for enlistment, he begs the captain of the Armored Personnel Unit Corps for a chance, and Captain Mifuni allows it. Elsewhere, Niobe and Roland discuss their next move. With the swarm of Sentinels digging, their routes back to Zion are limited. Niobe points out a support line they can fly through, but Roland is quick to protest, saying the path is too narrow and twisted for anyone to pilot through it. But Niobe is confident she can do it. Finally, Neo returns and tells them he needs to take one of the two ships and fly to the Machine City. Roland laughs at Neo's insanity. In 100 years, no ship has ever gotten within 100 kilometers of the Machine City. But Niobe believes in Neo and offers her ship. The rest of them will consolidate on the hammer and she will pilot it through the support line back to Zion. At the infirmary, the doctor prepares to administer a drug to help Bane remember what happened, but before she can, he murders her. As Neo packs to leave, Trinity tells him that she's coming too, even though she knows it's likely a one-way trip. It was an honor, sir. Neo says his parting words to Morpheus. No, the honor is still mine, Morpheus replies. Trinity and Neo leave for the Machine City, while Niobe, Morpheus, and the others leave for Zion. However, Trinity and Neo are unaware that Bane has snuck aboard their ship. He attacks and locks Trinity in the lower deck before turning a gun on Neo. Forced to listen to the man's psychotic rambling, Neo realizes he is Smith. Trinity frees herself and shuts down the ship's power. During the distraction, Neo fights for the gun and gains the upper hand, until Bane grabs a live wire and plunges it into Neo's eyes. Bane laughs at the now blind Neo and prepares to kill him, but sensing the machine programming in Bane's body, Neo is able to see Smith. He dodges Bane's attacks and strikes back, killing him. Then he frees Trinity and the two embrace. He tells her that it'll be okay, but she'll have to drive. The armored personnel units, or APUs, move to the dock and prepare for the Sentinel's arrival. Z and her friend Chara also head to the dock, where they'll operate a handmade bazooka together. At the dock, one of the diggers makes it through, and a swarm of Sentinels quickly follow. The APUs fire back, while Z, Chara, and other soldiers go after the digger with their missiles, hoping to stop it before it can reach the city. Missiles strike the machine, but it keeps digging, so Z and Chara run for a better angle. This time, Chara hits the machine's leg, toppling and crippling it. But this gets the attention of Sentinels, so Z and Chara run to another spot. Locke and his team cheer at the destruction of the digging machine, but their celebration is cut short as a second one arrives. Z and Chara move through the tunnels and attempt to attack the second machine, but this time, Chara's missile is blocked by Sentinels and again, they're forced to run. This time, Z gets away, 
but Chara is torn up by the machines. In the midst of the battle, the hammer approaches Zion. Although the flight was difficult and they had to battle sentinels along the way, Niobe successfully traversed the support line. With her ship only minutes away, one of Locke's men informs him that they'll be able to use the hammer's EMP to take out the sentinels. It'd take out more than that, Locke says. It'll wipe out our entire defense system. We blow an EMP inside, we lose the dock. Sir, we already lost the dock. The man replies. Another of his crew informs Locke that Sentinels damaged the gate, and they won't be able to open it for the hammer. So they send word to the APUs that someone needs to manually open it. Most of the troops at the dock are killed, but Captain Mifuni is one of the few still fighting. When he calls for a reload, the kid runs into the battlefield with ammo. He reloads the APU, then watches a swarm of Sentinels engulf the captain. After they pass, the kid runs over. With his dying breaths, the captain tells him that he needs to open the gate so the hammer can get through. At the command center, Locke communicates through the radio that the hammer will reach the gate in two minutes. Z overhears the message, and knowing Link is on that ship, she runs to the gate, just in time to zap a couple of sentinels that nearly stop the kid from reaching his goal. With Z's help, he gets to the gate fires at the counterweight, and opens it, just as the hammer arrives. Aboard the ship, Link activates the EMP and takes down all the nearby sentinels. The ship lands, reuniting Z and Link. As people celebrate, Commander Locke informs Niobe, Roland, and Morpheus of their error. The EMP took down all of their defenses. When the next wave of machines arrives, they'll be helpless. And moments later, that wave arrives. The teams fall back and seal the dock to buy some time. But the Sentinels repair the digging machines, and they continue burrowing towards Zion. Commander Locke updates the Council. In less than two hours, the machines will breach the city. All humans will move to the temple, where a narrow passage will force the machines into a bottleneck, increasing the desperate odds of their last stand. Commander, do you think that we have any chance of surviving? One of the Council members asks. If I were you, Counselor, I wouldn't ask me that question. Locke answers. I would ask him. He gestures toward Morpheus. Why? She asks. Because, Locke responds. He's the one that believes in miracles. Elsewhere, Trinity and Neo approach the machine city. As they fly, Neo can feel the machines around him and see them as lights in his mind. They are chased by machines, but Neo stops them just like he stopped the Sentinels. But they are overwhelmed and are forced to escape by flying up, above the dark clouds. For a moment, Trinity sees the sun and bright blue skies above the scorched clouds, until they plummet back under to the wasteland of machines. They crash land, and in the impact, Trinity is impaled by pieces of the ship. I've gone as far as I can, she tells Neo, and he realizes that she is mortally wounded. She tells Neo that he has to save Zion, and she tells him that she loves him. She tells him how grateful she is for every moment they had together, and she asks for one more kiss before she dies. Neo weeps before crawling out of the ship. He walks through the dark city, which in his mind is bright and glowing. An enormous machine flies in front of him, and Neo asks for a chance to speak. A swarm of small machines creates the form of a face. Speak! The deus ex machina says. Neo makes an offer. The program Smith has spread beyond the machine's control. Soon he will spread throughout the city, just as he spread through the Matrix. The machines cannot stop him, but Neo can. Both are anomalies beyond the machine's control. The machine asks what he wants in return, and Neo answers, peace. At Zion, the Sentinels suddenly stand down while the machines give Neo a chance to deliver on his promise. Although they don't know what's happening, Niobe and Morpheus realize it is Neo's doing. He fights for us, Morpheus says. The machines bring Neo into the Matrix, where he finds a destroyed world of endless storms, where every human has been replaced by Smith. They watch Neo as he approaches a singular Smith the one that imprinted onto the Oracle. He welcomes Mr. Anderson back and tells him he's seen the future. He knows how it ends. 
so the rest of him will just sit back and enjoy the show. We already know that I'm the one that beats you, Smith says. The two fight. Their battle takes them from the streets to the skies and into a building. Neo is knocked down, and Smith takes the opportunity to thank Neo for teaching him the purpose of all life. The purpose of life is to end, he says. Neo stands and beckons Smith to attack again. Their fight continues until Smith pounds Neo into a crater in the ground. Smith asks Neo why he keeps getting up. Does he even know what he's fighting for? Freedom? Truth? Perhaps love? Illusions, Mr. Anderson, he rants. Vagaries of perception, temporary constructs of a feeble human intellect, trying desperately to justify an existence that is without meaning or purpose. Neo stands again. Why, Mr. Anderson? Smith asks. Why? Why do you persist? Because I choose to, Neo answers. They continue to fight, and Smith knocks Neo down again. Suddenly, Smith realizes he is seeing an image from his premonition. This is the end. He knows he is supposed to say something, and then he speaks. Everything that has a beginning has an end, Neo. Smith is confused. Why did he say that? But hearing Smith call him Neo for the first time, Neo recognizes that the Oracle is speaking through Smith. Smith becomes frightened. It's a trick, he shouts. Neo stands and allows Smith to overwrite him, making one more copy. Is it over? Smith asks, and the Neo Smith nods. The machines fire a destructive pulse into Neo's body, and with his mind embedded in the Smith program, his enemy finally faces destruction. The world of the Matrix is filled with light as the Smiths explode in glowing brilliance. Outside the Matrix, Neo's body convulses, glows, and falls lifelessly with his arms to his side and Zion celebrates as the machines retreat. Inside the Matrix, the Smiths fade and leave the people they'd overwritten behind, including the Oracle and Sati. The weather returns to normal, and the architect approaches the Oracle. You played a very dangerous game, he tells her, referring to her risky manipulation of events to achieve peace. He asks how long she thinks this peace will last. As long as it can, she replies, and she asks if those in the Matrix that want out will be released. Obviously, they will be freed, the architect replies. I have your word, the oracle asks. Insulted, the architect replies, what do you think I am, human? And he leaves her. A brilliant sunset appears behind the city as Seraph and Sati arrive. Sati tells the oracle that she made the sunset for Neo and asks if they'll ever see him again. I suspect so, the oracle says. Someday. Did you always know? Seraph asks. Oh no, no, I didn't, the oracle says. But I believed. I believed. And now, thankfully, we know that the oracle was right. We will see Neo again in The Matrix Resurrections. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That way, you won't miss out when we talk about the fourth Matrix movie. Thank you for watching, and see you on the next One Take.